All right, welcome back. So, I am making this video after a 26 hour workday. And the reason I'm doing it is because of a comment that I got from another YouTuber, Razor RC. I had talked about the receiver in this thing going bad. And I spent two and a half hours trying to bind these two Spectrum radios to this. And I was having an issue. And then I'm going to put a link to the video of when I first took this out after I got the radio to bind. And I had to use the rugged to bind it and then calibrate it. And I did all this off camera because I was struggling so bad. It's it's hard to do an instructional video when it's failing and failing and failing. Like if I struggle on something for 10 minutes or 20 minutes or sometimes even 40 minutes in a video, I can edit it down and then show you a re resolution in one video. But I spent two and a half hours binding three radios, not just two, trying to get the receiver to hook up correctly. So in this video, I'm going to explain the struggles I went through. And then when I went out and ran it, um, having to initiate the AVC, even though when you turn AVC off on these things, when it says inhibit, um, it's not, the AVC is not off. The only way to, to truly get it off is to turn the AVC on and then take your throttle settings like I showed. You take your throttle settings, set it to zero. You take your steering setting, set it to zero. Even on my speed run cars, I always take, if I'm going to use an AVC receiver, I'll 100% take the throttle setting and put it to zero. And I'll leave the steering setting on when I want an, a speed run car to go straight. The reason I do that is because I'm speed running and I don't want anything controlling my throttle or my brake. I'm in charge of that. You know, that's a $2,000 RC going down the road and I've had AVC literally reduce the throttle because it sees some tire spin or, or sees it a little out of shape and it cuts the throttle and it ruins your pass. So I've always turned the throttle setting to zero and I'll leave the, the steering setting at 50%, never a hundred percent. And even though in ABC and I'll show you guys that here in a minute in, because I, I want to show you how you have to set up your remote before you calibrate it. And I've explained it in several videos on if your remote is not, correct to where everything's zeroed out and you have brake at 100% and you have throttle at 100% and your steering trims are at 100%, you can't calibrate your, your receiver or your ESC because what happens is it'll take that value and if that value is not enough, it won't bind. So you're doing the process over and over and over again and that's why that's what I thought was happening with this I tried a um, a factory radio like this or even the smart radio the DX3 the new smart one I also zeroed out the smart radio um, so that everything was back to factory settings because I thought I was overlooking something. So it literally took me two and a half hours. Now, before I do any of this, I do my research. I go to, to Spectrum. I watch Spectrum videos on a Spectrum receiver. Now, this one has a Castle ESC, but a Spectrum receiver. So when you have an AVC Spectrum smart receiver, um... What ends up happening is you have to calibrate the receiver and then you have to calibrate, you have to tell 
your ESC what those settings are. So it's kind of like when, when I say calibrate um, your RC, it's not just calibrating the ESC. And, and a lot of people mess this up is they'll go ahead and put their, whether it's their Spectrum ESC, they'll put it in, you know, uh, programming mode. They'll do the full trigger, the full break, and they'll tell the ESC what the full trigger and what the full break is, right? So that the ESC is programmed. But with these new smart receivers, you have to tell it what full trigger is, what neutral is, what break is, just like you do the ESC. But on top of that, you have to do your right turn and left turn so that it knows that. Not only that, I've watched several videos where people struggle with this. You have to mount down an AVC receiver. Any gyro receiver, whether it's TSM or I don't care what the manufacturer is, if it's controlling your steering and your throttle, you need to mount that thing down. Your RC needs to be level and you need to not move it um, during these programming settings because if the receiver is out here on the bench and it's not even installed in here and the thing's bouncing around and moving or you're hitting buttons and, and it's one position then another position, the gyro can't self-level itself. It doesn't know what's forward, what's left, what's right. It, it just doesn't know because some of these receivers you can mount on the side, some you have to mount sideways. Some you have to mount in the rear of the car. Some you have to mount in the front of the car. So whatever receiver you're using that has some sort of assistance on throttle and steering to stabilize it, mount it in the RC. Wherever you're putting it, right or wrong, <laughs> I, I find some gyros, like we when I first started with speed running, some, we were using tail gyros. Um, for airplanes and we didn't have drift gyros and that kind of stuff and those gyros could only mount two ways flat on the on the surface of the chassis in a certain orientation or sideways only two positions and with that I found that they had to be mounted in the rear of the car because if you mount them in the front, you ended up getting a bad tail wiggle in the back. Like it, up here, it was stable in the front. You would mount it in the front. And when your back sliding around, it's not feeling it enough. So it would make no steering adjustments. Or any steering adjustments it would make, it would make so minimal it wasn't helping the two-wheel drive rustlers or the two-wheel drive slashes at the time that I was trying to get to run, you know, 100 miles an hour. But if you take that same gyro and just move it to the back, it would sense every little bit of movement. So before it would, before you could even see it, it was correcting the steering and they were going dead straight. So I, I just want to make that very clear. And because Razor RC brought this up and he was saying, you know, I, I left him a message, you know, I have a 6100 in here. And he's like, well, you have to bind those different than you would, say, you know, an, another older receiver. You know, say this 315. Because it doesn't have AVC in it, this you don't have to bind the receiver. You don't have to calibrate the, e, the AVC in these because they don't have AVC. At least I don't think this one does. It might. I don't know. But if your receiver doesn't have AVC in it, it's not going to make you do a calibration calibrating the AVC. So with all that said and all that long talking, we're going to dig into that today. And I'm going to show you how to bind up a receiver. And then after you do that, you have to reset everything and then go ahead and do your e your ESC. Now this receiver works. It's just, I have to disable the AVC pretty much completely where it doesn't do anything. So it's not controlling the RC and the RC works great. You guys watch me run it. 
but that's telling me the AVC is failing in there. What's failing in this AVC, and I've had it happen before, when I run a basher receiver, especially one with AVC, I really don't need AVC on a basher. Um, I just had this receiver I, um, laying around, so I threw it in here. But what happens over time, the orientation little piece that's in it from those hard landings and those hard crashes and that kind of stuff, it gets damaged inside the receiver. So it doesn't know the orientation. It thinks this thing's on its side or, or it's stuck in a position. And then the AVC will just never work right. And that's what I mean by this, this receiver is failing. I'm going to turn AVC off anyway, but in case anybody's having the same problems I have, either it's going to fix your issue, what I'm going to show you, or it's going to wiggle and you can go ahead and turn off your AVC so that you can run it in a basher like I do. So before I do any of that, <laughs> I'm going to pop these wheels off because the way you have to calibrate the receiver is kind of sketchy because the throttle doesn't work, but if you don't do it right, the RC could take off. So rather than deal with any of that, we're just gonna pop off all the wheels. These, I really don't like this design. You know, even my receiver wires here, you see I have it patched there and patched there because this popping it off so many times, having to calibrate this receiver, it's a pretty old receiver. Um, the wires have gotten pinched in here because the box is this little box and the wire will be hanging out a little bit and pinch it or pinch over here. So I've had to repair this, this harness a couple of times. And no, the harness is not bad causing this issue. It's literally still this uh, receiver. But it is the new smart one and it is mounted down. So I'll bring you guys in so you can take a look at it. All right, so here's the receiver. It's in the correct orientation like factory is. Um, antenna wire facing towards this way. Now this can be mounted this direction or flipped around in that direction. It can be mounted on its side, but you can't mount it on its side in this small box. On its side, it would have to be mounted this way. So if you wanted to mount it on its side, it would have to be mounted this way in the box. And as you see, the box isn't wide enough for that. So on its side could be this way, or it can be this way from Spectrum, or you can mount it flat, and it can be this way, it can be this way, it can be this way, or it can be this way. As long as it's as long as it's flat. So four ways flat and two ways on its side. Well actually. Yeah, I think two ways on its side. I believe you can do them like this too on their sides. But I, I, from my understanding, I thought it was just forward. But you'll just have to look it up. I know it can be mounted on this side or this side and flat any, any way you can get it flat in there. But mount it down before you bind, bind it. This cannot be loose. So let me bring you up and show you how to set up your controller. All right, now that I have access to the receiver, we're gonna set up our controller. And what I mean by set up your controller, <clears throat> make sure that you're on the right model number. If you're not, pick a new model number, put in the name, get it all ready. Um, as you see, it says SR 100%. This is gonna to be tough because it's the swipe thing and my swipe button doesn't work that well. But we're going to get it down to ABC. Swiping down is okay on this. Swiping up doesn't work. Okay. So as you see, my steering gain is down to zero. My throttle gain is to zero. But priority is at 100%. This has to be at 100%. Um... When you don't want to use AVC, you can make this zero. Um, if you have any of your throttle settings, if you have steering 100, throttle 100, you can take the whole range and that's dropping it down by percentage. 
maybe 10 15% is all you really need. Um, and these can be at 100%. The way it comes is this is steering is 50%, throttle is 50%, and then priority is 100%. I always leave priority alone because that's what it's going to do for both of these settings. But definitely turn it on. The other thing, it'll come with this on inhibit. Inhibit's supposed to turn off ABC completely, but you can't have inhibit off when you have an ABC receiver because then it doesn't know um, how to, I guess, uh, it doesn't know that you have ABC in this receiver. So definitely turn it on. So we're gonna turn it back on. If I can get it to swipe, there we go, on. Then we're going to put these things back to where they belong, which is 50%. I don't even know if I can get it to do it. See? Come on. There we go. Up doesn't work on this too well 50 bring it to 50 percent that's a factory setting all right i got it at 50 percent and it's on so 50 50 100 that's the factory setting before you've done anything now what we're going to do is definitely make sure that your steering travel your right turn is right turn and your left turn is left turn. The other thing you're going to do is go to your sub trims. Your sub trims need to all be zeroed out. Steering and throttle, very important, have to be zeroed out. That way it's 100%. The other thing is right here. See your brake rate? See how mine's at 47? That needs to be 100. Oh, that's... So this is your regular trim. Steering, set to zero. Where's my brake? I think the brake one moved. There it is. So your brake rate, 100% brake rate. All right, that way when you press the brake, it's getting 100% of that signal. So zero out your steering, zero out your throttle, your brake rate, 100%. All right, and then your sub trims at zero. That's the way you're gonna start with your controller. AVC on, 50%, 50%, priority 100%. Everything out, zeroed out, brake rate should be at 100 and that goes for the DX5C and the Rugged. Doesn't matter which one. All right, so what I have to do so that you guys can understand what's going on, I have the voltage regulator set up for the Game Changer fans. So even when it's not on and I plug in the batteries, you hear my fans come on. But that's not gonna allow you to listen. It's gonna distract you guys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unsolder the game changer voltage regulator so I can turn off all my fans. All right, so I got my regulator unhooked so the fans won't come on. All right, so now what we're gonna do is, oh, this one doesn't have an on and off switch. So what I have to do is press this button and then we're going to plug this in because I don't have an on and off button. This is what makes this doing this RC kind of hard to do. Okay. So it's blinking. Now we need to get to bind within a certain amount of time and when your controller doesn't work right, it's pretty hard to do. 
So we're going to go over to bind. Now I have to move this controller away from the RC. It can't be this close. So I'm going to hit OK. It's going to give me a certain amount of time. There we go. Now I'm going to go full throttle and the throttle and brake should not be working. So full throttle, the light goes off. You see? Then we're going to go full brake, the light goes off. Then we're going to go right turn, we're going to left turn. And now it should work. That's how you calibrate the receiver with AVC and everything working now. So when you bind it and you have no throttle but you have steering, don't sit there and play with steering after you bind an AVC receiver. If you play with the steering, you're going to throw everything off. So you bind it, bind the controller just like I showed you, go full throttle to where the light goes off, go full brake to where the light goes off, go right turn first, then left turn. It'll go off and then it'll stay steady. Once it does that, your throttle should work. Now let's move on to the ESC. All right, so we did the receiver calibration now. So it's not as simple as just binding when you have an AVC receiver. And I see everybody bind up their receiver, their throttle doesn't work, their steering works, and they're going, I did it wrong and they do it again, and then they do it again, and then they do it again, and then they start playing with steering, they start playing with throttle, and then all of a sudden, it starts working, and they go, okay, I'm good to go. And that's where you're not getting the full potential out of the receiver. Um, and then they try the whole ESC calibration, which is the next thing you do. So once you do that, I always like to turn the radio off, turn your ESC off. Now this is a castle system. Spectrum, you'll see how to do your throttle calibration with Spectrum. That's where you hold the set button, you power it up, you, you hold, keep holding the set button until it flashes a, a steady red light, you let it go, and it'll sit there and it'll, it'll flash constantly. You'll hit set one more time, that sets your neutral position. You go full throttle, hit set again. Then you go full brake, hit set again. Now you've calibrated neutral, full throttle, and brake. Then your spectrum will go into some funny beeps and sounds, and then your ESC is calibrated on a spectrum. On a castle, it's different. Castle, you gotta go full trigger, and you gotta power it up. Now, they normally have a switch, but this switch went bad. So, I always cut off the switches because they fail, and I just solder the two wires together. Now, when doing that, whenever I plug in the battery, it powers up the ESC automatically. That's where I start having trouble with calibration. So, with Castle, you want to turn on your controller first. If you have a switch, you can plug in your batteries, but leave the switch off. What you're gonna do is go full throttle, and then you're gonna turn on your switch. You're gonna hear some random funny beeps, then you're gonna go full brake, you're gonna hear some funny beeps, then you're gonna go neutral, you're gonna hear some more funny beeps, and then it's calibrated. Now, because I don't have a switch, I have to do it like I just did the thing. I have to plug it in while going full throttle, which makes it kind of difficult. So I'm full throttle right now and I'm gonna power it up. And nothing. When I go to neutral, it starts beeping. And I had to do this several times until I get that to work properly. So that's what I mean 
the way I have this set up, it was two and a half hours for me to do it. But just remember, because I've already done, this already has this calibration in it. I had to do this several times before it actually worked. Um, but with castles, you have to basically turn it on with your trigger fully depressed. It All neutrals seem to be the same. 1.4 something is all neutrals to all remotes. And I, I think it's a standard thing. And I think that's why Castle has you start with full trigger. So it knows you're trying to calibrate the ESC. It just doesn't work well when you have your switch soldered off like I do. Something with the spark and the powering up. I think it needs to be powered up first and then you turn it on. It makes it easier. So it's going to be hard for me to do. It, it took me a little while to get it done. I know it's calibrated. Just remember, since this is a receiver video, you have to calibrate your receiver first, the way I showed you. And then whatever ESC you have in, you have to calibrate that controller to that ESC. And then you'll be all set. So I just wanted to make that video so that people are clear on the problems I'm having and you can see why I have problems. Now I was trying to do this with the fans running, constantly running. I can't hear the beeps from the ESC. I was having a problem with the receiver wasn't working. It wasn't taking my calibration. Like it would do the, it would do the throttle. And then when I would go to break, the light would go off, but it would flicker really dimly. And that's not good. That's telling me that it's not getting enough break. That light has to fully go out in order for that receiver to uh, calibrate. So there is a re receiver calibration and there's an ESC calibration when running Spectrum receivers. So you guys just have to remember that. And I think it's something very important. And I don't, I, I didn't, I don't know if I ever looked up anybody having those problems. I have seen a bunch of live videos on people trying to do it, and they're failing. And you're trying to text and explain to them how to do it and what they're doing wrong. But you know that person doing the live stream is reading everybody else's comments, and even texting it, you can't really get that point across. And that's why I'm making this video. And Razer RC is correct. There's a specific way to calibrate these um, receivers. So it's something you have to do. But there is a receiver calibration and there's an ESE calibration. And you have to do both for this to work properly. And this receiver 100% is still failing after everything I've done. So you can see my struggles and why I struggled so much with my EXB. It's never as simple as, as you guys see in videos, especially when I'm doing something off camera. But whenever I can make a video to where I strongly, you know, can sit down and confidently, you know, you, you see we're having a problem calibrating the, the Castle ESC. Um, and this took me a struggle. So I was struggling with the receiver and struggling with this. And that's why I didn't want to make a video. It's easier when you're not fully modified like I am, like having a regulator on this thing, the dual fans, having the switch bypassed. It's easier when they're stock components. But when it's fully modified like something like this, and I you know, don't have a switch on it, and I got fans turning on as soon as I plug it in, it's powering up as soon as I plug it in. It's really hard to show you how to calibrate something when all these different things are going on. And that's why I struggled with this one. And even with everything that I did, and even knowing that I have to calibrate the receiver and calibrate the ESC when I went and ran it, and you'll see, I'll have to go back in there and take the AVC settings and take throttle and steering and set them to zero. And this RC will drive fine. So I'm gonna run it that way until this thing fully fails, which I don't think it will. I just think it doesn't know the position that it's mounted because whatever's in there telling it what position I have it mounted is probably broke on one of those bad landings I had. Could have been an upside down landing, could have been a side impact. Whatever's telling it the orientation 
is damaged in there now. And that's why the AVC is not working properly on that receiver. But I don't need AVC on this RC, so I just disabled it and we had a fun bash day. So I'm gonna get this solder back up, get this RC buttoned up. We're gonna get some packs charged up and we're gonna be out ripping tomorrow. Tomorrow is Saturday. I just wanted to make this video. You're probably not gonna see this video till Saturday, but hopefully this helps some of you guys out there. That there are two calibrations. Bind and calibrate your receiver, and then you have to calibrate your ESC. Once you do that, you're getting the full potential of that combination. All right, whether it's a Spectrum ESC and a Spectrum receiver, could be a Hobby Wing ESC, whatever ESC that'll have a calibration so it knows what full trigger and what full break is. But Spectrum new smart receivers, if they have AVC in them, after you bind them, you have to calibrate them 100%. And that's where a lot of people make a mistake trying to put in an AVC receiver. They don't mount it down. After they bind it, they don't calibrate the receiver. They just calibrate. They just try calibrating the ESC, but it won't work because they're hitting full throttle, full brake. It's not seeing it because the signals aren't coming out of that thing. It gets all messed up from that point. You just have to follow. The, just know you have to calibrate your receiver and you have to calibrate your ESC using a Spectrum receiver. Now, I've never had to calibrate my Futaba receiver. No other receiver have I had to calibrate um, that's had a gyro in it. I've just had to mount it down, bind it, and then it knows. This one, these new smart ones from Spectrum, you have to calibrate them with the throttle and with your steering settings. And now after you do all that, you still have to set your end, you have to go back in here, set your end points, lower down your brake, whatever you're gonna do for the way you're gonna run it in your DX5C or whatever radio you're running. But binding it to this receiver, everything has to be zeroed out and then brake has to be at 100%, so you're getting that full brake signal to it. Hopefully, I'm just rambling on and repeating myself. I just want to get it through. Hopefully, everybody understands it now. I'm sure there's going to be people struggling with this, and even people that are struggling with it, um, it's hard to explain it in text. So hopefully, this video helps out some people. I know Razor RC put a link to a video in there, and then YouTube caught it and put it in the delete section or hold for review section or whatever. But um, I think he's made some videos on it. Um, so go over there and hit up Razor RC somewhere on his channel. I think he has a video on calibrating these uh, AVC receivers as well. Check them out. But I made this video because he commented about it. Hopefully it'll help. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you guys on my next video. right into the curb. Oh.